Friday's live stream with JD Miller Art and Samuel Lynn Galleries. We have a fantastic show prepared for you tonight, including our very two special guests, David Yarrow and Phil Romano, with a lovely performance at the end by our very own Ballet Dallas. So without further ado, I am going to welcome the star of the show, our artist, Mr. J.D. Miller. Yeah. Hey. Wow. Hey, guys. Well, this is our third official Reflection Friday. Third we did, official Reflection Friday. We did some warm-ups, right? Yes. And they were a little rough, but we're, I think we're slowly getting it. Uh, man, we got an amazing show tonight, Grace. We have a fabulous show tonight. I'm, I honestly wish, well, it's going to be great. But to be at home watching, looking at all the action that we have and the lovely secret surprises we have prepared for you, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. So first of all, um, for the people, for the uh, people that it's the first time tuning in, what we, what we're doing is the first Friday of every month, we are having what we call Reflection Friday here at Samuel and Galleries. And for now we're broadcasting live on the YouTube channel and then Facebook and seven to eight thirty. Uh, and every week we do something different. I always do some kind of painting tonight. I got a baby painting because I'm not going to be painting very much of this because we got some amazing guests tonight. Uh, we're going to have in a little bit my business partner and friend Phil Romano. Yes. Showing his new work. You're going to interview him. Yes. Uh, at the end of the show, we actually had Ballet Dallas. Yes. They came in and, and recorded all day. All day last week. They had a great time in the gallery. We got to watch them perform. So we're really excited to show all of you their lovely performance, which is quite beautiful. Yes, and that's going to be at the very end of the show. So we're going to finish the show with that. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to start with tonight, guess what? Guess who's in town? A very special star. Yeah, a big time international star. International major star. Yeah, so, so uh, one of our, our greatest artists and just one of the greatest humans on the planet uh, just flew in from Africa got in last night after a 15 hour flight, maybe 16, I don't know, something I think it's 16. like 16 hours. 16 hours. <laughs> and so um, what we're gonna do is uh, bring him in and then he's gonna tell us a little bit about what he's doing, isn't he, Grace? Yes, and he has two kind of secret projects that will not be so secret very soon. Okay, good. That we'll be showing you in just a moment. Yes, so can we, uh, right now we're gonna get started. Let's bring Mr. David Yarrow to the stage. David, <laughs> come in here, brother. Uh, Mr. Give me a okay. I don't know what to do. Right? It's okay. It's yeah, <laughs> we're, we're all tested and safe. I already had it, and we, Grace got tested this week, right? Yes, Just yesterday. For the show, so we're good. Oh yeah, <laughs> you look better, mate. <laughs> so uh, get over here by Grace, because she's got the microphone. So. Uh, David, you just flew in, right? Got in when? I got in uh, last night from Bonds, and I got in from Doha. Uh, and we flew from Nairobi to Doha. So it's about 21 hours in a plane. But I, um, I'm not sponsored by Guitar Airlines, but if you should try them. They're very, very good. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, it was so, it's, it's quite appropriate in a way to come back to, to Dallas, Texas. It was the last place we were before COVID broke out. And I remember about the third, second week of March, we were filming in Marfa, and people were beginning to get worried here. And we left four days later uh, and now the first place that we've come back to is, is Texas which is a sign of our affection for your great state uh, uh, Dallas and most importantly this gallery which does a, such a fantastic job uh, representing us so, well, welcome back it's, mate it's, good it's to have you here. very yeah. excited to
what you've got wrong in your life and, and questioning what, what you can do better in your life. As, as an artist, and there are many artists here, there's some great artists in this room, I, I think we all walk a, a, a wall of insecurity uh, in terms of questioning whether we're good enough, whether our work's relevant enough, and how we can get better. Uh, and I think COVID for creatives has been a very important time. I, I'm convinced that over the next two years, the films that are produced will be the best ever, the music that's being produced will be the best ever, and the art that's produced will be the best ever. Because creatives have had time to sit down, take time out, reflect, and process, creatively pro protest, process. Creative processing is so important. You think about the gaps in your work, you think about how you can raise that bar, uh, get over that threshold of what's mundane in a very content sport world. Uh, one of the uh, uh, ironies for us was that Africa, uh, parts of Africa, it's such a vast continent, but Africa was considered right at the beginning to be right on the critical path of COVID. Uh, and that's been true in South Africa. You can understand why in some of the townships outside uh, Johannesburg, uh, stopping COVID was going to be impossible. Uh, but outside South Africa, it's been extraordinary. I've just been in three countries, Tanzania, Kenya, and Rwanda, with a combined population of 130 million and there's been less than a thousand deaths. And people said, well, maybe that's because of government manipulation and people don't know the real numbers. Uh, I've been COVID tested about uh, 10 times in the last uh, 21 days. So uh, I can assure you in Rwanda, you know, Rwanda uh, lost 900,000 900, people in the genocide in three months, 900,000 people. They've lost 22 people to COVID quite extraordinary and yet they're incredibly compliant everyone wears a mask you get tested every second day for filmmakers to be able to go to East Africa now without the human footfall is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity there's no one there there is no one doing what I do in East Africa right now so we thought we've got to go there and we went with the support of the governments uh, with, a, with, a, with a really strong crew and the material that I've been fortunate enough to get, I'll always remember that it was done in COVID 2020, but it's the best we've ever had because the opportunities we, we, we had and the animal encounters we had were the best ever. And we were able to give it time because quite frankly, we had nowhere else to go. You know, <laughs> normally in August, you, could, you think, do you go and do the polar bears in Alaska? Do you go and do the grizzly bears in Alaska? Nah, that you can't go there. So we just stayed uh, in East Africa and we came back with an awful lot of stuff and and I think many much fonder memories of East Africa. I'm quite a big critic of um, Governments in, in Africa, but they've had a good COVID if, if, if people could have a good COVID Africa's had a good COVID and how long were you in Africa About, about uh, 40 45 days, 45 days. And, I, and I we had uh, uh, one, one, one of my icons died this year, uh, yes. uh, Peter Beard. Uh, I used to go to Peter's galleries in, in Soho in New York. And Peter uh, wasn't a, a wildlife photographer, he was an artist. Andy Warhol said, art is what you, whatever you can get away with. And Peter really embraced that. And we, we spent quite a bit of time working with one of the biggest, if not the biggest elephant in the world, an elephant called Craig. Uh, he's like a mammoth. He's not really an elephant. Uh, and I got so close to him that we thought we could get a girl close to Craig and I could take a picture of both the girl and Craig. And people would say to me, I'm, uh, you're nuts. That's not going to happen. Safety. But last Monday we did it. Uh, a picture which we, got, we actually got it done in FedEx, which is why the quality isn't very good. But it, it was taken on Monday, so you have to forgive us a little bit. Uh, but that picture... Uh, was, was behind. Uh, but I'm just not going to go too close there now. I just suddenly realized that because this is going out live and we've got to make sure that Lorena, Lorena can't see too much detail, but you can come and have a look at it later on, okay? But we just can't. It's not been quite released yet, so um, we just have to be a little bit careful. Uh, but when it is 
released, it will create quite a storm. And uh, please, uh, please come and see me if you're, if you're, if you're interested. We also did, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, models here. Uh, so uh, this is a, uh, one of the most decorative zebras in the world. It's called a Grevy zebra. And we wanted to play with light and line and abstract and just create art rather than document wildlife. Documenting wildlife is, is very dull. Uh, so we, we leave here and, and we move to uh, North Dakota next week and Wyoming and Montana. Uh, there's a couple of pictures here, uh, which I think we did, it was an important two days of my career working with uh, Cindy Crawford, uh, that picture over there and this picture here. Um, in those two hours with Cindy, uh, we raised nearly a million dollars for charity in two hours. Um, so the great news and very exciting news is Cindy and I part two is happening in two weeks time and it's going to be batshit crazy. Uh, but I can't really tell you too much about it other than the fact that the first place you'll see the pictures is through JD and we'll make sure that people here see them before anyone else. Uh, that's, is that a deal? So I think it's... Uh, in 16 days, but the whole site is already being put together. We're doing one other thing. I watched a lot of film in COVID, as I'm sure a lot of you guys did. Uh, a film are my prompts. Uh, people like uh, Scorsese and Ridley Scott and Spielberg, they're very much my creative heroes. And we're looking to do some work that pushes boundaries again. You know, Dr. Zhivago uh, was filmed in, with you, I'm sure you've all seen Dr. Zhivago with uh, Omar Sharif and Julie Christie, and uh, it was filmed actually in northern Spain. Amazing that you could get that, that kind of cold Siberian look in northern Spain. So we're going to turn one of your states, or a small part of one of your states up north, into a Dr. Zhivago set. And uh, we'll have wolves, bears, uh, a lot of... Russian looking ladies in fur coats and see how that all plays out. So lots of things to look forward to. I know you as a country have a tumultuous five weeks ahead of you. Uh, as an outsider, as a British person, uh, all I would say is, because I know a lot of people are worried here, that the one thing that your country has, which our country doesn't have, is it has such energy and positivity and breadth in the economy, that whatever happens, you'll be just fine. And I know you're worried about the next five weeks, but you've got a lot less to worry about than we do have in the UK. So I'm just going to stay here. Now that I'm here, what's the point of going back? Um, I, I think I've spoken enough. Uh, if any of you want to know a little bit more about these two pictures, the one that's been turned away, I would, if you like my work, and I'm flattered that people do, the, the, the most important thing from an investment perspective is get in before the pictures have been released. If you can get in before the pictures are released, it's a no-brainer that if, that if things get tough for you, you can go to Sotheby's in two years' time and you'll, you'll do just fine. Um, so there are, there are a couple of images that maybe you should have a think about. Uh, but most importantly, so good to be back. I love Texas, love people from Dallas. Uh, you're the most, most hospitable uh, state that I've ever I've come across, and uh, it is a second home for us. Thank you, JD. Thank you, Grace. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. That was lovely to hear from you. We're so excited to have him back and to see his new exciting projects. As he said, if you'd like to come and see them, just come down to Samuel Lynn Galleries. And now we are going to go back in the studio live with JD Miller for a live painting. Thank you so much. Was that not a great interview with David? Uh, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> so, I hope so. Well, we saw some of his new artworks, yeah. 
and we saw the David Yarrow room right here at Samuel and Galleries. But right now, you're going to do another live painting, which is very special for us. But here's, I'm going to have to have the mic because my mic died. Oh, am I working now? Marcus? So am I working? Is my mic working? Guys, this is the... <laughs> this is live. That's what, that's what kills me. Oh, you can have your spec. So <laughs> am I working? Yes or no? Hello? No? Let me try this one. One more thing. Hello? Anything now? There we go. Yes? Hallelujah. All right. We're back. And you yes. can hear us. <laughs> Both of us. All right. Good. So, Grace, yes. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to hear it. I'm going to look, watch the playback, but uh, you know what? This is fun. So we're going to get better and better at this. We promise, okay? Pinky swear. Give me that right there. Pinky all right. Swear. <laughs> um, so there, there's a lot of moving parts for a live show like this, and so wow, every week it's a whole new adventure. Okay, but I, yes, is. I'm going to paint. I'm going to do something now. So yes, you can wander and have fun, and then if just a few minutes, so don't go far. We're going to have Philip Romano up. We and will. you guys are going to interview, okay? Yes, so I'll be you interviewing guys get ready for that soon. But in the meantime, enjoy a very special painting by Mr. J.D. Miller himself. Enjoy, everybody. Thank you. All right, guys. So what, what I've been doing for these shows is uh, I've been pulling a painting of mine out of the vault, something that I haven't seen in years. And I revisit it and see if I can duplicate what I did. Hey, Dean. Hey, Leah. How are you guys? Good to have you here. We've got some of our young audience in here tonight. Good to see you guys. Uh, but what I'm doing this, this week is I pulled out a painting that's like pretty much totally different than anything that I've done recently. And if you notice, it's essentially got a black background and then very linear um, figurative drawing on it. And so what I'm going to do, I did a miniature, I got a miniature canvas here. And for those of you that have been watching the show, I use, instead of pure black, I use something called Liz's Black, which is a type of black that I learned to make from my mentor, Liz Richardson. She was 87 when I met her. And she, I studied with her for five years up until, her, until she died. She painted and taught right up until the end and was as feisty as ever. But she, she taught me how to mix this. And if you guys, I don't know, we don't, can you see this, Marcus, if I put it up here? Arturo, can you see that? So basically, if you guys look at that, you can see that it looks like black, but here, if you see that red coming through, that's alizarin crimson, and on this side I've got blue, which is French ultramarine, and I put these two together, and if I put these on the canvas, guess what? It looks like black. So first thing I'm gonna do in this painting, and this is, I chose a really simple style tonight because I'm not gonna have much time to paint. We're gonna be going to Phil in a little bit here and hear about his newest series of paintings. And then uh, we're gonna wind up the show with a performance by Ballet Dallas. So we got a lot of fun things to go. Now what I'm doing, I'm gonna grab a little bit of pure alizarin crimson in here and just sort of make this background interesting. And if you notice, I'm putting it on really thick because I wanna come back and go on top of it with those white, those pure white lines, but I have to have something to cut into in order for it to work. So what I'm going to do in this segment is just very quickly prepare the background so that after we go and talk to Phil about his work, I will come back and do a little bit of a drawing on top of this while the oil is wet. The other thing is, too, that I do work in oil. Uh, Leah and Philip both do as well. We use the reflectionist 3D techniques that I was fortunate to develop years ago. But the whole thing is to use a lot of paint. I mean, don't skimp on the paint. Put a plenty of oil on there. Fortunately, when I started doing this, I was working as a producer for CBS Radio, and Finally, after years of starving in the music business, I was making enough money that I could afford oil paint. And it's quite a luxury. Ooh, look at that. That's just pure alizarin crimson right there. Let's 
machine, when I scrape into that, if you see that, it leaves a little bit of the, the red showing through, which is really cool. So David Yarrow has, as he said, he's been in Africa for a lot the last month. And we've been fortunate to see some of the previews of his work. And he is, as always, knocking it out of the park. But we're going to be excited to announce some of the new pieces here in the coming couple of weeks. We're also working on a launch of the National Hotel in downtown Dallas that Sean Todd and his group, they spent $450 million on the renovation. And uh, I was fortunate to be commissioned to do a very large painting for the lobby. It's two nine foot by seven foot canvases. And David is, we are putting 25 David Yarrows on all the residence floors. So that's gonna be really cool. But hopefully for Reflection Friday next month in November, and I believe that date is November 6th, we will hopefully get Sean Todd in here, the, the leader and brainchild behind that project to talk about it in anticipation of the grand opening in November. All right, see how fast this goes? I mean, that's what's beautiful about oil. Uh, people all, always ask me, well, how long did that painting take? And you know what? Typically, they're done in one session while the oil is wet. Now, this is a very small painting. This isn't going to take long at all. Some of the big ones can take up to a day. When I did the national project, I painted 14 hours straight. And my hands were killing me by the end of that, but had to do it while the oil was wet. And I was talking to someone the other day, uh, Pablo Picasso, who is arguably the most famous artist of all time. Um, he painted a lot. He did over 80,000 paintings, but he would paint three or four oil paintings in a day at times. And there's a story about when he was in his 50s. This is like in the 1950s. At the time, his paintings were selling for about $40,000 and up. And in those days, that was probably like a quarter of a million or something, maybe more. And uh, he invited this American industrialist in to maybe sell him some paintings. And they were going through the paintings. And so the industrialist said, well, how about that one? I like that. How much is that? And Picasso goes, $40,000. And the industrialist goes, hmm. 40,000, it's Picasso. Yeah, it sounds reasonable, a quarter of a million dollars. And then he goes, well, how long did it take? And Picasso goes, thought about it, goes, hmm, about two hours. And the industrialist goes, oh, you know, my God. Of course, he's dividing 40,000 by two, and he's thinking $20,000 an hour, just the way we think in America. And that's what he said, two hours and you're charging $40,000? And Picasso goes, thought about it, goes, Real, actually 56 years and two hours. In other words, it took all of his life to be able to paint that in two hours. And so I love that story because that's the way I feel. It's not how long it takes, it's what it takes to be able to get to a place where you can do it, whether it's two hours or two days or two years. It takes just the amount of time that it does. Okay, look at that. So if you see it when I scrape in this a little bit, and I'm gonna leave most of this real thick, because in the last segment after Philip's interview, uh, we're gonna come back and I'm actually gonna finish the painting. And so that's pretty much it. You can see the background is done. And the cool thing about oil is that stays, this will stay wet for a couple of days, but tonight it'll be wet when we come back in about 20 minutes or so, and I'm gonna be able to mix some paint and I'll show you how I turn that into something like this. But if we are ready, let's uh, go to Philip and Grace in Philip's room, the international room. Hello everyone and welcome back. I am here to interview the very infamous Phil Romano here. And 
Mr. Romano, we know that you are a very busy man with your multiple projects. You have Trinity Groves and many others, but you are back in the studio now and we are so happy about that. We have all these amazing artworks surrounding us. So tell us a little bit about what inspired you to start painting again. COVID. <laughs> I had to find something to do. <laughs> That's true. We all had to find something to do during COVID. That's right. So we, you know, we started painting and, and I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting old so I needed a, an assistant like Picasso has. Yeah, so I, that's why I got my girlfriend to help me. This is Laurence. This is Lawrence. <laughs> Hi, hello everybody. So the two of you painted all of these together. Yes. So tell us a little bit about, so COVID inspired you. This is part of your international series. Yeah, this is the international series. We did, this is probably the fifth time we did the international series. Mm -hmm. And they sold out every time. Well, they're beautiful artworks, so why would they not sell out? Well, what I like about it is that I like energy, right. and I think going from color to color, different colors, gives me energy. I see it. You can look at it and look at it. This gives you energy, <laughs> going from one to the other. So it, uh, it worked out good. And we, we, we like. I call this. This is a. This is a nude painting. You can yeah. see it. You look at it. You could get back here. You see it yet? This is Populous International too. Yeah, but it's a nude painting. Yes. And it's beautiful. I did it, I did it in the nude. You did it in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you two are working together, how do you often work? Do you do one canvas together at a time, or do you kind of feed off the energy of each other as you are painting? Well, we're, we. She's got her couple. Of you did yourself, right? Right. Right. Well, she does hers, and I tell her when it's what she's got to do about balancing it in different colors and this and that, spread them out. And we, we collaborate and end up being done. You know, it's a two process. The, part of the art is the, is the background, the canvas. And that, that takes time. We get that done and dried up and done and designed and get them done. Then we come in there and do all the painting. Because once the paint, paint is, is mixed, you got to use it. But we don't mix the painting till the, till the uh, background is all done. And that background is a, it's not a, an oil background, it's acrylic background. Okay. So we get the acrylic done, glaze it, get it done, and then we put the uh, colors in, and that's oil. Yes, it's the three-dimensional oil, and I believe you use a knife. 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 Yes, cool. not a paintbrush. So usually your international series, they look quite like this. They have these colored square, and then they have the black background all around it. But this one behind us is quite different. And Laurence was telling me earlier that the reason you started on both of these and then you were just kind of like, let's just go for it. Let's just take it all the way. So Laurence. We started with a square and look, with the background black. Now let's keep going, keep going. And, and Laurence? Yeah, no, it's, it's, I have to say that I've never done that before. and. I learned so much from Phil, but it's also such a bonding time. It's it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I uh, every 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 piece is unique in the way we did it, or what we talked about, or we didn't talk at all, or how long it took. Every every single one is so unique. Yeah, she's she's going down there by herself now, <laughs> in pain. In your studio. My studio. Yeah, yes. that's okay though. He, he trusted me. He trusts me enough now. That's very special, very special to be Mr. Romano's assistant. But these are absolutely beautiful. We are so excited. We just installed them over a week ago, so they are quite brand new, but we love having them here. They are fantastic in this room. They're lovely to look at. You two have done a fantastic job, and we're so excited that you did go back in the studio because where would we be without these fabulous artworks? What's neat about art itself, when you're an artist, the way I feel about it is that you created something here and there's only one like this in the whole universe. Exactly. One of a kind. And it's unique. It's different. And um, I mean, that's what I think gives it value or gives me pleasure to create something that, that hasn't been created before. It's not here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's 
And again, energy from the color, which I get, and I kind of get me going. There is a lot of lovely energy in this room. It's fantastic to look at. Okay, so Mr. Romano, Laurence, thank you so much for showing us and telling us about your inspiration for these fantastic artworks. They are available for viewing at Samuel and Galleries now. You do not want to miss them. So come and take a look whenever you like. We are open all week, Monday through Saturday. Thank you two again so much. And now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to go back to JD live painting in the studio. Let's see how far he's progressed with the painting that he's going to show us. All right. Hey, guys. Philip, it's good to see you painting, my friend. Uh, for, the, for those of you who haven't been in the gallery recently, we are, we are open. We've opened back. We're open Monday through Saturday. Uh, come in. With the, these paintings of Philip's are amazing, and uh, it's really a treat. Yes, I'll take that, Grace. Let me borrow that. Thank you. Good job, as always. Uh, but, okay, a couple things. I want to shout, do a shout out. Uh, we've got a new collector that was in, uh, from Portland, and uh, it's uh, Mariana and Doug O'Brien. And they came in Saturday and fell in love with one of Leah Fisher's self portraits. And we had intended to have it up here on the wall, but uh, she painted a new painting yesterday and it's not here. But I did want to have Leah come up and tell us a little bit about what she's working on because she's doing something pretty exciting. She's getting ready to work on her book and I think finish it up. Come on, Leah. Leah Fisher, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Here, you can just hold that. Hey there. How are you, JD Hi. Miller? Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. great. Good. So doing well. Can you tell uh, everybody you are kind of in the final stages of a book you've worked, it's been almost two years now, hasn't it, been that you've been working it's, on it? It may have been three. Really, three I don't, years? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. So, um, so you know, I came to JD one day and I said I've, I was actually taking a shower and I had an idea and I started, I've never really painted anything. Um, I was mostly did abstracts and I decided I wanted to do something figurative and portraits or what I, what came to me as a vision. And so I started doing a series of portraits, and, and when I started doing it, I started kind of feeling a lot of emotion and decided to make them into self-portraits. And um, they, all my portraits, you know, if, if you've seen them, if you've seen them on Instagram or here at the gallery, they don't necessarily represent me visually, but what they are are inner self-portraits which portray different emotions or different times in my life or possibly people who have influenced me or had an impact on me. So they are inner self portraits. And as I started doing them, they have really taken on a life of their own. And I started writing about them. And so we decided to put a book together. And what it is, it'll be one portrait and one vignette explaining what the inner process was. Some of them are very serious. Some of them are funny. Some of them are nonsensical. But um, they're all kind of a uh, narcissistic project of me, me, me. Yeah, but they are amazing. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's been extremely cathartic, and yeah. it has been about um, my journey and, um, and my process. And so it's, it has taken a long time, but the last few years have, been, have also been a journey. And, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit, there's kind of a beginning and an end to it. And so... What I'm doing is it's, it's almost done. All the portraits are almost done. Maybe two more portraits that need to be painted. And there are probably about 10 vignettes that need to be painted. And I'm going to Sedona on October 25th. And I'm staying there for a month. Which is one of the energy vortexes on the planet, right? I yes, mean yes. S Sedona, Arizona is 6,000 feet above sea level. 11,000 years ago, people lived there. It's one of, um, you know the oldest, most spiritual civiliz civilizations. People go there to find themselves, to heal. And um, I feel like um, that's, it's been calling me for a while. So yeah. I'm, I'm going, I'm spending a month. I'm going to finish my book. And so, yeah, <laughs> JD's yes. like, when is the book gonna be finished? And yeah. you know, I think that yeah. it, is, it is gonna be finished soon. It's gonna be amazing. And, yeah. um, and so early next year, be looking for that. All right, good. Well, thank you, yeah. Leah Fisher, everybody. It's good to have you in the house as always, honey. Yay. All right. Hey, would you give that to Grace, please? Sure. Wow. Okay. So, um, man, 
What a great night. David Yarrow in the house flew in from Africa. Philip Romano flew in from um, White Bluff. <laughs> and uh, I am going to paint a little bit here at, uh, before we finish up the show. Uh, we're going to end tonight just a little preview with a performance from Ballet Dallas. They came in and taped an entire day. And they actually took one of our artist Tyler Shields' photographs, the, the girl with the red balloon. It's an amazing uh, photograph. And they did a whole performance interpreting his photograph. So that's pretty cool. That's going to be the end, at the end of the show tonight. So, but what I'm going to do is paint a little bit. That's one of the things that I get paid for, and I like my job. So, uh, as I said before, I pulled one of my paintings out of the vault that hasn't seen the light of day in quite a while. And if you notice, there's a, a, that's a moon in there. And if you guys don't know, we, we are in the middle of a harvest moon right now, one of the most beautiful moons of the year. And so I thought, wow, why don't I go ahead and, and interpret this type of painting? Uh, I've done the dark background, and I'm getting ready right now to go in and just freehand draw um, a scene in there. And I'm going to be inspired by this harvest moon. So we'll see what comes out. But the thing about this type of painting, it's fun. Uh, it's a lot of freedom. I don't sit down and draw everything out. And it's the other thing is, it's, uh, it's a little dangerous because you either get it right the first time or you don't. And so let's hope that I do tonight. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while. But what I'm going to do is get one of these palettes and I'm going to put pure white paint on it. And this, that, these lines are done with white paint and they're going to be etched right into the background of this thick dark background that I've created. So let's get some white paint on here. And I'll just, uh, Arturo, is there any way you could grab a picture of this? I want people to see. So I don't skip on the paint. Like, look at that. That's, that's a pretty good amount of paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my knife and I'm going to get a nice point on it. And I'm going to go in this and I'm actually going to, it's as, as if I was inscribing onto the canvas. And so the first thing I always like to do is I use what are called phi points, which is based on the golden section. It divides the canvas into thirds, and those are the most powerful part of a canvas. Uh, it's based on the golden number phi, 1.618. And so I'm just going to start with a line right there, right down that phi line. Now one thing I do have to do is I clean my knife after every application, because if I don't, then this white would really quickly turn to mud. So let's just imagine if we're in a room, kind of like this one here. There's a little wall going there. Cleaning my knife. And then I'm going to create a little, as if maybe there's a table there or something sitting in front. And again, I'm just making this up. I'm kind of like Bob Ross. I love Bob Ross. He just used to you watch his shows and he'd, he'd, he'd make his trees and he'd go, I'm just going to put a tree right there, a special tree. It's actually your tree. It, does, it can be any way you want. And that's, I like that idea. And I'm going to do this any way I want and just hope that it looks good at the end. But it's really about having fun, really. And this is pure oil on oil. So let's see. I want to, I got a little moon in this one, but this is, we're in a harvest moon right now. So let's get on there and let's put a let's put a nice big oh yeah see how that just fell down there that's cool can't predict that I think I'll bring this up as like it's a little reflection yeah look at that moon that's a harvest moon there ladies and gentlemen and then if we were imagining say we were over here at Trinity Groves Phillips uh, new project that he's built, well actually new, he's built over the last 10 years over on the other side of the Trinity River uh, where the Calatrava Bridge is and I remember when I met Philip 12 years ago he said he had bought that land 
He said, I'm gonna turn this into an entire another section of downtown. There's gonna be 50 restaurants here and apartments and hotels. And sure enough, over the last 10 years, he's built it. And for those of you who haven't been there, it's amazing. But I'm gonna imagine if we're over at Trinity Groves and I'm just gonna put some trees in here. Like all those, those trees, look at that. Just kind of, and here's the thing. I said it was in a room. <laughs> well, guess what? I could be in a room at Trinity Groves, right? We're looking out the window at the harvest moon and you can see the trees in the background and they're just sort of doing their thing. Let's, let's do some stuff back in here. And yeah, it's as if we're looking out the window at one of the restaurants over there little sidewalk coming here, going out, going down. There's the, there's the sill there. And then maybe over here, we've got some, a little bit of a fence going. And again, I'm just, just making this up as I go, just doing what, what feels like fun. And I love how the white contrasts with that dark background with that Liz's black. And then let's do this, let's put a, Let's make a little sill here. Imagine we're sitting in the restaurant over at Beto and Son. It's my favorite Mexican restaurant now. Sitting there, looking out the window, there's the harvest moon. Got some trees going. And then, you know, I think I want to put a few people out here like that are just sitting outside. And this is very impressionistic. If you, I studied the Impressionists a lot when I was first painting. I loved the way that they, they were the first to go in and just go into nature and just sort of capture nature in a quick and easy way. And they didn't do a lot of detail. And if you look at their paintings and you'll see a city scene, in the background you see all these people, but if you look closely, the people are just dots and dashes and lines. But when you move back, they merge and it, you, you believe they're people. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm having a few people sitting out there. They're just a couple little kids there. That might be Dean and Lisa who are here. I mean, Leah, sorry, Leah. Uh, they're sitting at the table out there having some food. Let's put a nice top on that table. And then there's just some more people out here having fun. And a couple people over here walking. Maybe they're looking at the harvest moon. And so we're building a nice little night scene. I think the other thing is, I just want a few more trees here. And a lot of this is just what feels good on the canvas. And let's, let's, put a, let's make this moon sort of glowing here. Yeah little glow. And then in the, in the front, I'm imagining I'm over at Beto and Son. I'm having some food. I got, I got me a, a margarita glass here. Or well, I got a little one here. A little mug of something sitting on the table. Yum. And then maybe I'm there with a friend. Let's have them have a glass. We're just building a scene here, looking, we're sitting, enjoying our dinner. And then right here, I think it'd be fun to have a bowl of chips. Because what is Mexican food without chips and sauce? Heck yeah. Let's put a little, maybe a little thing that it's sitting on. And then over here, oh shoot, what would be good with our dinner? Salad. No, that's not, not Mexican. Fajitas. Let's do some fajitas. Okay. And then over here, let's just do a plate of fajitas here. They're just sitting here. Oh, yummy. Making me hungry. And there's your fajitas. And then actually we're getting pretty close. What I've learned too over the years, when I was first starting painting, I would get so excited. I'd get to a place and I wouldn't quit. I'd want to keep going. And sure enough, I'd put one too many strokes and then I'd screw up the painting and it'd take me hours to fix it. 
So I've learned, you know, when you get to a place where it feels good, no matter how much fun you're having, you gotta stop. So we're actually getting real close on this one. Again, these don't take long at all. These are very fast and free. I'm liking the way that looks. I don't know. I think it's pretty close, guys. Uh, let's just see. I think maybe just a little bit more of a couple of tree trunks there. And yeah, that's really close. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do now, if you remember, I used Liz's black in the background. And underneath here, there's some reds and blues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in in a couple places. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to reveal some of the blue and red. So it gives it another level of depth in addition to just the black. Like right in here, I know there's some nice red. Some blue. And maybe up in here. And yeah, this is, this is starting to come together. And there, look at that. That little red up in there to bring the eye up around. And I don't know if I left any in here. There's some, there's a nice place right there. What that does, it keeps it from being just boring black. I mean, I do use black from time to time, but for these impressionist paintings, I really tend to make this Liz's brown that, that she taught me. I mean, Liz's black. Okay, just a couple more people because I want to have a big party here. And then we're going to sign it and we're going to get ready for our cl the close of our show. Yeah, they're having fun out there. Okay. And let's just do, I want to bring one more over here just to bring the eye around. Keeps the eye from getting static. And I think we're there, guys. All right. Does that look like a harvest moon? Yeah, yeah, cool. And if you noticed, it was one stroke. That's, that's what's fun. And it's not perfectly round, but it, it feels alive. And you can even see the, you know, the craters in it. OK, so I think that's good. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sign it. And I'm going to use the white. And for this one, I'm just going to use my initials, JDM. There's that. And let's get this. There we go. Okay. And uh, it's twenty twenty, isn't it? <laughs> still, is it still 2020? Oh, yes. Let's just put the date on here. 2020. All right, guys, I think that's, that's going to work. Um, yeah. Does that look OK? Finito. Right? Finito? Yeah, all right, good. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you, Marcus. Um, well, a few things. So again, We've got people around the country that tune into us. I just want to say yes. hi to all our friends that aren't in Texas and that are here that can't be here tonight. But thank you to them. All over the United States and yep. all over the world. Thank yep. you for tuning in. Yes. And uh, so, uh, Marcus, my brother Marcus Jeffrey Miller, thank you for directing tonight. Good, great job. Um, we're getting better and better. We will be back, Grace, on November 6th. For the yes, next we one. will. The next one is November 6th, always at 7 o'clock, the right. first Friday of every month. But before yeah. we leave, yes. even though you have just done this beautiful painting of yours, yeah. 
we have a very special um, performance by Ballet Dallas. So Ballet Dallas is a um, non-profit and they specialize in bringing the arts and dance to the local Dallas community. And mm -hmm. this is a dance that they did, which was actually inspired by um, one of our artworks in the gallery by our artist Tyler Shields' Red Balloon. And there is an interview that I did with ballerina Diana Crowder. Mm -hmm. So you will see that in just a moment. We hope you enjoy. But as always, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. We hope yeah. you had an amazing time. This was a super special night yes. for us. We yes. had two of our, oh my well, we always have JD, but we yeah. have two of our great artists here David Yarrow and Phil Romano. So and Leah Fisher. And Leah, Leah Fisher here was here as well. As well. Yeah, it's yes. a full night. It was a full house, full night. And thanks for our few friends that came. Thank you guys for yes. being here Thank tonight. you so this much, everybody. Really it's okay to clap, yes. <laughs> you yes. can clap, you can Thank laugh. You. Yeah. Sip your drink. <laughs> well, shall we roll the tape for Ballet Dallas and wrap up the show? I think we should. Well, remember, everybody, it's all a reflection of you. Come back next month, and thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. I am here with ballet Dallas dancer Diana Crowder. We have a great show tonight. Um, before we kind of get into the dance, I'm going to be asking Diana a few questions about ballet Dallas and what they do. So Diana, we're so happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about what ballet Dallas does for the community and the events you might have coming up. Yeah, so ballet Dallas's mission is to make ballet uh, progressive, innovative, accessible, and affordable. So, okay. you know, ballet is this beautiful art form that's very steeped in tradition mm -hmm. um, and so we sort of play with how we can make that more accessible and innovative for today's audiences and also for today's artists. We've actually been performing um, every other Friday we've been doing we've called them pop-up premieres and we've performed exciting. two minute or so solos okay. um, every other Friday that are brand new they're newly choreographed newly commissioned music and we've been wow. working on those as something to present to the community during the this time of That's COVID so exciting. when we can't be on stage. Okay, yeah. and are those um, streamed online through your Instagram or your website? Yeah, those have been streaming on our Facebook and most okay. of them are up on our Facebook as well as our Instagram TV and okay. also you will see some of them tonight. We're going to be... So exciting. Yeah, we, we were able to sort of readapt them for a new space, which okay. is always really fun to be able to perform okay. them for a wider audience. Um, and you mentioned community, so we're actually launching an adaptive dance program in October wow. um, where we'll be teaching classes for children. Um, okay. Uh, in adaptive dance, so that's we're really excited about that. And you do a lot of that. You do a lot of community outreach and yeah. reaching back into the community because Ballet Dallas is non-profit, right? Yes, Ballet Dallas is a non-profit. Um, you can go to our website. It is www.balletdallas.us. Well, thank you so much, Diana, for speaking with me. We are so excited to see the dance in just a few minutes, and we hope you all enjoy. Thank you again to you and Ballet Dallas and your director, Carter. We can't wait to show everybody. Thank you so much for having of us. Of course. Thank you. Bye-bye.